I'm Andrew Robinson uh, with uh, Quest Again. Uh, my background is in uh, intelligent systems design. Uh, so I've been doing that for about 20 years, uh, in mostly online systems. Um, and uh, Quest a game many of you might have heard about, um, but it, you know it's a game that gets people outdoors to sort of collect biodiversity uh, information. Um, so what I'm, I want to talk about today is uh, the bio expertise economy. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenge. I want to then talk about how Quest a game has working have been working to try to solve this. Um, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the bioexpertise engine we developed, why we developed it, what's it about. Then I'm going to make an exciting announcement that you're going to be the first to hear in this room. You're very special. Um, that we've been working really hard on and we're really excited about, and I think other people will be too. Um, and then, of course, feedback and questions. So there was a paper that came out in the Royal Society, the Philosophical Transactions last year about digital collections, biodiversity, digital collections. And there was a quote in it that was very interesting near the end that because biodiversity is a little bit different than other sciences, uh, there's actually a timer. We're running out of time. Right? It's, there's, there's an urgency here. Uh, and, the, and the quote was, what will it take to describe a million species in 10 years? That is the rate of species discovery that's needed, and it will require radical changes in thinking. Okay, so I just want you to keep that in mind. So we see three major challenges here that are facing the biodiversity, biodiversity protection. First of all, there's not enough reliable data. I think we all can agree on that, right? Not enough reliable data. It's not enough experts, and the experts that are out there are actually retiring. Um, and that's a big problem, and that's, I think, one of the reasons that Simon talked about is that we, we, it really helps to have volunteers involved. Um, and that the population is largely disengaged. And that's what we're looking at is how do you engage people again. Um, the solutions are pretty straightforward. Obviously, we need uh, data quality needs to be an essential feature of da data collection. Alan Finkel talked about this a little bit in the opening um, speech. Um, people need to own and be rewarded for giving their time and expertise. That's really important. And motivate the public to collect valuable nature information. That, that's the solution. So how has Quest Game been working to achieve this? Well, I'll give you a minute to look at this slide. Uh, just, just take a second. We've got the human motivations. We've got the biodiversity data systems. Most citizen science is actually happening in this space down here, which is all about uh, sort of community, sharing, working for a social good, volunteering, feeling like you're helping society, right? There's also curiosity, learning, discovering new things. That motivates a lot of people. And sometimes it's just entertaining and fun. But actually, although we we're seeing so many great citizen science projects at this conference, it's a small, tiny fraction of the population. People are motivated by other things. There are 1.5 billion gamers out there, and a lot of them aren't going into nature very often. <laughs> They're very, they can identify things in garages and bedrooms, right? <laughs> um, but, they're, but they're not living in nature and seeing the beauty of nature and the magic that is more fascinating if they look closely than any Disney film or any Avatar film, really. Avatar was great. I loved that film. But, <laughs> but you know, uh, this, is, this is what it's about, right? So people are motivated by other things. And then there's this whole, what about money, food, shelter? We're talking about most of the developing world here. That's what motivates most people. And we're missing out on all of that, right? So Quest a Game, I think often people say, oh, it's a game, it's just a game. But it's actually not just a game. The Quest a Game part is just the interface. What Quest a Game is about and what we've been building is a platform. Because people need, when they submit a siding, they need to find out what it is. And they want to know quickly. And they need to know what its value is. Is it rare? Is it something? And, and so our algorithms are, are running that all the time. 
So we get all these sightings coming in from players in the game who are going out into nature, taking photos of things. They want to get scores. They really want to find out what they've just found. Did they, you know, some species that's rare, and did they get a, a, are they going to get a great score for it? Do they complete a challenge or a quest? So we, we have this demand for expertise building up here. And then we have thousands of experts on the system who are supplying the expertise. And when you get this demand and supply model, you're starting to talk about an economy developing, and we saw this. Some of these photos have a higher demand. They might be rarer things, harder things. They need higher levels of expertise, right? And you can see here what we started to do is we started to put prices on this. And this comes down again to Simon's, uh, that $4 thing was really interesting, and I'd like to talk about that later. Um, but uh, we started to say to the experts, well, look, why don't you nominate a, a, an organization, a conservation organization, and we will make a donation to that organization on your behalf for every ID that you get correct. There's 75 organizations now uh, signed up for this program. And you can see that the values start to change. The system, this is an intelligent system, a collective intelligence system. The value starts to change as the demand goes up. Um, it's all blind peer reviewed, double blind peer reviewed. So there's no way to cheat it. It's following scientific principles. Um, and you can see that what happens is you get these sort of leaderboard kind of things that are people you can figure out what they're experts in. This is really fascinating. Those are actually correct IDs that have been gone through a double blind peer review process by people who are higher ranked experts than them. And the number four ranked player on this overall is 10 years old. And the number six player is 12 years old. Knows every bird in Australia and a lot of birds around the world. Um, and, and people get inspired by this sort of stuff. Um, so we're getting a lot of data, a lot of players um, all over the world, and all the data is shared with the Atlas of Living Australia. Uh, the, the player actually has an option whether or not they want to share it. This is important as well to give people agency, as much agency as possible. We think that the quality of the records is really high. Now I've been trying to get more research on this, but last in December, Quest Game was second most downloaded information of all the data on the Atlas of Living Australia. That's more than, uh, than everything except the OSCAM, which is the, all the um, museum's data combined, which is older past data, which people need as well. But for ongoing data, we're actually the largest provider of expert verified data on a daily basis to the Atlas of Living Australia. Um, okay, so this is the exciting part that only you guys hear for the first time, um, is that once we got this prototype, once we got this thing working, we realized there's an economy here. This is important because we have to change thinking. We have to give a value to these things, whether it's $4 or $1 or $100. So we're introducing BioCoin. This will run on a blockchain. Um, and it's the world's first coin, that expertise engine actually is the world's first uh, uh, expertise-driven economy. Um, and this is a coin that we want to, for saving life on Earth. Um, so you can go to biocoin.life. Um, we believe that biocoin is the answer that's going to bring in a much larger audience, the people who are not just interested in social good, but in all sorts of things. You have three types of, of people participants here, often people tend to separate into th think that there are three separate ones, but in fact, often people align with all of these. Sometimes we want data, sometimes we're the experts that give the expertise and want to earn coins, and sometimes we're just the public that also wants to earn coins for providing data, right? So the way you mine the coins, it's not like Bitcoin where you have to solve complex mathematical problems and burn all this electricity to get the next coin. Uh, this is actually the way you mine it, is you go out, you find uh, species, but more importantly, you identify the species, and if you can prove your expertise, you earn the coin. Uh, we we want to make sure that this is governed properly. Governance is going to be the most important thing. Ex Equestia Games not going to be owning this. This is going to be a nonprofit global foundation with experts all over the world involved. You're all invited to be involved. We need as much information as possible to guide the rules for this. Uh, we have lots of partners. The Global Biodiversity Information Facility is on board, Donald Hoburn. And the idea is that we're going to open up this engine, this BioCoin engine, to lots of citizen science projects. So as long as they hit the criteria, they should also be able to get the coin. 
Trust is key. That's why we're going with the blockchain on this. Blockchain solves all these sorts of things. It gives people agency. It takes out that sort of centralized uh, one company that can sort of make all the decisions. The Zuckerberg who can say, this is how it's going to be. We get rid of that. And the exciting part here is that we're going to have an ICO, a coin offering, which will allow investors to come in at 30%. Anyone can buy coins. I'm already getting people saying, I want to buy coins for my kids. Uh, so we've, got, we've already got a list of people building up. Um, we're going to, 10% is going to go to advisors and partners and people who are already on the proven expertise through uh, apps like Quest a Game. But it could also be other ones. Perhaps we're talking with iNaturalist as well. So as long as you meet that criteria, you will get some coin as well. Uh, then we're going to have 10% for development, and then we'll leave 50% for biocoin mining. One biocoin for every school kid. They're going to get a biocoin, and they will be able to activate it if they can identify three to five species. All right, so this is what it looks like. I urge you all to go to biocoin.life, and we'll be announcing this more over the next couple of days. Read the white paper. There's a white paper there that explains this in detail. We want as much feedback as possible on it. Thank you.